Welcome to the Flavius Aetius Garrison meta. In this video, I'm going to talk about everything we've learned over the past couple days, testing this commander in the garrison and in the open field, reviewing reports that are absolutely jaw-dropping and meta-changing. These are full equipment reports that we ran these tests on stream. So stick around in this video for answers to important questions. Can you use Flavius in the open field? Short answer, no. What is the best garrison pair so far that we found with Flavius and his best talents? Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, and this video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. And today, I want to go over Flavius ATS. And there are some misconceptions about this commander, in part to the wording of the skills on the commander, and also just the desire for him to be an open field commander, even though I will argue that he isn't. So use the timestamps to jump to whatever portion of the video you're interested in. I want to start with why he is a bad open field commander, but a great garrison commander. And put very simply, the majority of his skills just aren't relevant for the open field. The thing that makes everybody get excited about him as a commander is the active skill. This is why they think he would be good. Like Nevsky is good in the open field, 2,300 damage factor with an additional 450 damage factor. That's overtime damage, um, 150 per second for three seconds, if the target is below 50%. This is insane in a long-running garrison fight because your target will be below 50% for the majority of the fight. The second skill is amazing in the garrison, 15% of all stats, okay, but for open field, you're losing out on the defense and the health boost. That's 15% of each stat, 45% total. It's a great skill, but the most important stats are missing in the open field. This is one of many reasons why he is not a great field commander. And then the next skill, 20% counterattack, that is so important for Garrison's anti-swarm capability. I'm going to talk about that more in just a bit. But also, when troops are garrisoned, normal attacks inflict a debuff on the target. I think this is Flavius's normal attacks onto the enemy, not their normal attacks onto him. That increases the damage they take from infantry by 1% for 15 seconds, stacking up to 10 times. So you can make the main thing that you're fighting take an additional 10% damage from infantry. I mean, that is relevant for a counter rally, but mostly relevant, I guess also relevant for things that swarm the rally, but mostly relevant for the garrison harming the rally. From there, the fourth skill. Oh, by the way, I mean, the majority of the skill doesn't work in the open field. 20% counterattack is not enough on a single skill for open field, but let's just keep going here. Increase all damage dealt by 10%. This actually is strong. That is very strong. That includes counterattack damage, by the way. And when launching a normal attack against a target, inflicted with an additional damage effect, there is a 100% chance of inflicting silence for two seconds. This also, I think, is why people are maybe interested in Flavius in the open field. What if you have yet another commander that can silence? However, I want to prove to you, as we did in our live stream recently, that this is not related to making the target take more damage effects, which is what this third skill does, but it is damage over time effects that this additional damage effect is referring to. That is what you see on the active skill, a damage over time effect. So that would include things like Cyrus inflicting damage over time or new CPO inflicting damage over time. It would not include Guan Yu's fourth skill, which is not a damage over time effect. Okay. So this is really important to keep in mind that he looks like Certain commanders would synergize with him. They do not. It is damage over time effects, which, by the way, does work really well with Zenobia, who does a damage over time. We're going to talk about that a little more. The expertise here is also amazing. It makes it so you take less normal attack damage. This is important when your garrison is getting swarmed and when using an active skill. There is a 30% chance of inflicting two stacks of this debuff that makes the target take more damage damage. Now, you can still only have a total of 10, I think, total stacks, which is a little bit of a bummer if I'm understanding that correctly, because the good news is it will stack with your third skill. The bad news is that 
um, you can't have more than 10 stacks. So you'll get the stacks faster, I think, but I don't think you end up with more stacks. And we can look at a garrison report and prove that to you. So uh, all that to say, I think that what we've seen so far from Flavius Aetius is that unfortunately he is miserable in the field, but a god in the garrison. And I will show you the reports were so bad when we were just goofing off in the field that like I tried all kinds of real combos and Cortex ran all kinds of meme combos and real combos and was just absolutely obliterating me. I mean, okay, he didn't win with a low har, but the fact that we could even try it with a straight face was like kind of hilarious. I mean, he used Esong Kira and almost beat me with a Flavius CPO. I mean, like, yeah, it, it just, it it's not good in the open field. Don't use Flavius for field. It's really simple. Don't do it. There may be a way to break him, but I haven't found it yet. And it could be that when you have other commanders with lots of damage over time effects, maybe you get a little bit of value out of that two-second silence, maybe. But I'm just not convinced at this moment in time that this is the way. And maybe if you're going all in on swarming a garrison, there is a way to leverage the Flavius ATS silence along with Guan Yu silences. I'm not saying there's like no way to use Flavius in the open field for his utility, but it just doesn't feel like where you want to be. Contrast that to garrison situations. And now we have a completely different story. We ran the garrison tests a number of times to see how good Zeno and Flavius would be and Zeno and YSS would be as a comparison point. And it is shocking how good the Flavius actually was. So keep in mind that in these reports, these are full end game meta gear iconic, almost every single piece of equipment is talented. Um, for me, every piece was talented. For the rallies that we use here, everything was talented except the accessories. Four iconics are on all the commanders. I mean, this is like best talents you could be asking for, best equipment, like the whole nine yards, okay? So let's get a look here. This first report was actually a tie. Um, 176,000 to 175,000, technically the garrison one. But I call it a tie compared to the other reports because every single other report was really decisive. This is a Gilgamesh Nebu, by the way. Um, and here we go again, this time 50k victory for the garrison. And we did it three times because if we only ran the test once, it would be hard to know if that first one was representative of reality or just randomness. I think that is just randomly getting a better result. Here is about a 40k victory uh, on another test, maybe more like a 30k victory. So... Zeno Flavius is beating archers, and I did not expect it to beat archers because Gilgamesh hard counters Zenobia, big time, big time. Every time she heals, Gilgamesh is doing a ton of damage, as long as Blood Craving is active. And if you wanted to see what those stats look like, here are the stats on the Rally and Garrison. Also, you can see the Iconics represented in here. Strong equipment all the way round. When we ran the same Garrison against Cavalry, the dominating force is XY Nevsky. Now, people lose their mind and they're like, but what about Attila Nevsky? And I keep saying that Attila Nevsky really just exists so that you can't swarm it. Any situation where you would run Attila Nevsky, you would have preferred to run XY Nevsky for the damage. And I get, I totally get that Attila Nevsky is immune to the silence and we'll have to go run that test to see if it performs better than the XY Nevsky. But at this moment in time, I don't feel like it will. The XY Nevsky gets obliterated. Even though the silence is only for two seconds on the Flavius, it is disgustingly effective against XY, who has that faster skill cycle. This is a nasty report, 183 to 264. And then again, 180 to 280. And then again, three times, 181 to 281. Absolutely disgusting margin of victory here. And I get that XY scales up over time. I understand that on his fourth skill, he is going to ramp up his damage a lot. This is true. Uh, Flavius also, however, ramps up when an enemy gets low. So I get that the XY does benefit a lot from running the rally long, but so does the Flavius, quite frankly. So I'm not sure how much that influences this result, but I think it's a strong indicator when you now compare to the Xeno-YSS combos. Because Xeno-YSS against XY Nevsky 
man, what a tough spot. 219 to 151. XY Nevsky wrecked it. We did it again. 218 to 181. I mean, the result practically flipped when we switched to using a YSS secondary. 210 to 136 with the archers. Gilgamesh Nebu just freaking slaying the Xeno YSS. And then um, we wanted, we were running out of time, but we wanted to go and try Flavius Primary. Now, I want to just mention that for the Flavius Primary, I'm no longer using my best set of gear. Now it's fully untalented gear, no Iconics. So that influences the result for sure. 215 to 130 over here. This is Zena, uh, Flavius YSS versus Gilgamesh Nebu. And then we had time for one more. We ran XY uh, Nevsky against the Flavius YSS, 207 to 115. The XY Nevsky crushed the Flavius with YSS. And I don't think that differential can be explained entirely by equipment. So from what I've seen so far, Xeno primary with Flavius secondary is the way to go. And if you were placing a bet right now, like I would just not even level up your Flavius. I don't know that you need to. And let's talk about those talents for a moment because that is super crucial to getting an accurate test result in my opinion. And let me just show that to you really quickly. Here is the Xeno build that, I mean, this is tried and true. This is tested hundreds, if not thousands of times on my account alone, where I have garrisoned. Pretty standard. This is a conventional Xeno build. Nothing creative here. Um, we are using three out of three on emergency protection for the maximum skill damage reduction. Also, you get loose formation for more skill damage reduction. Also, from the healing, we're going for counterattack to boost our attack a little bit. It's not that much, but I think this is worth getting. And also, two out of three on Rejuvenate. Uh, courtesy of Wick Gaming, we all as a community now have much better understanding that there is a rage cap of 220 per turn. And so, when you account for normal attacks and counterattacks, you only need two points of Rejuvenate to get a rage cap of about 220 rage on those turns where you're using active skills. Obviously, you want these points in the garrison tree, and this is a very conventional layout in the infantry tree. I want to talk for a moment about talents I did not take and I cannot recommend. The first of those talents is hold the line. I think that hold the line is god tier if you can manage to keep all infantry in the garrison. Do I trust a kingdom, any kingdom in the game, to keep all infantry in the garrison? I do not. Sure, you can kick people out of alliance, you can manage it very closely, and it could be that maybe... If you can swing it, the all-infantry, hold-the-line build could be better. You have to make sacrifices to get that. Those sacrifices include the extra attack over here, a little bit of extra health. Maybe you have to sacrifice a little bit of rage gen to get enough points to go all the way up and get to hold the line. I can see how it could be strong. I'm just saying I don't plan to run that in a garrison build anytime soon because I just don't think it's reliable enough. In Ark of Osiris, you want anyone to be able to jump into the garrison and still have max value. Um, and also, if you have your backup garrison be a Xeno YSS because you don't have a ton of Xeno Flavs yet in your kingdom, then I think there's a lot of value to being able to have different troop types in the garrison and not be, um, you know, your effectiveness diminished, okay? Um, I did not take King's Guard because I don't think, compared to these other talent options, it's even remotely close in its performance. I did not take Know Thy Enemy because this is only for defending your city. And we're not talking about city defense here. We're talking specifically about defending a garrison. Now, when you want to see what Flavius talent you might use, here is the build that I think makes the most sense. It is right over here. For the same reason as I was describing, I did not run up over here to get Hold the Line. I do think that you could go for a build that gets Hold the Line if you sacrifice Feral Nature. That will be a fine approach for Garrison. Good luck to your kingdom, keeping all infantry in there at all times. Realistically, you're going to have to kick some people out of your alliances when um, they bring the wrong troop type in there. And realistically, when you need to spam to fill the Garrison because it's getting swarmed, I think that you're going to lose ultimately a lot of value from this. So comedically, hold the line gives you the most value in a situation where lots of things are attacking you. And I think in that situation, you're least likely to keep Full infantry to even be able to get that benefit. This is my opinion. I do, I can see how it could be very good, okay? Um, and for open field, this is what we tested. I, I'm not saying this is God tier. I'm just saying this is what we used for our open field testing. We debated using this other build, 
but ultimately didn't. And the reason we went this route is that ultimately there's just a lot of March speed and March speed manipulation over here. So we opted for the rage gen, which even in this situation where we were less likely to rage cap because there's no Trajan for open field 1v1 tests, there was no William for open field 1v1 tests. Flavius just got racked. It was just a joke. It really was a joke. So this is the build I would use for Garrison. Again, I can see how you could advocate for hold the line at the cost of feral nature. I can see the value to that, especially if you have a strong secondary commander doing a lot of skill damage. Could be worth. I think Flavius YSS is like the only other consideration besides a Xeno partner. Um, and I, I just... Don't even know. Like, there, we, we thought about it. And like, what other infantry commander would you use? And a lot of people were saying, oh, use CPO in the garrison. And I'll just talk about that for a second because I think that doesn't work. I mean, I guess theoretically you could do some testing with CPO in the garrison and see what happens with Flavius. But I don't think this skill works. Infant, increase infantry health when attacking troops. I mean, I guess technically you might be attacking troops. This might work against a rally, maybe. 40% attack, okay, seems good. But then the fourth skill definitely does not work. Uh, when troops on the map take skill damage, well, you're not on the map, so you're losing this effect here of the shielding entirely. So you're talking about a three-skill commander. I mean, you'd rather just use Xeno. And I get you get rage boost over here when the target silenced all damage by 10%. Seems really cool. I'm into it. But I think he's, like, way too swarmable. Like, way too swarmable compared to a Xeno. I think you would almost certainly prefer, in fact, you would certainly prefer the Xeno here, who, by the way, has just really great anti-swarm. Makes it so that the normal attack damage you take is reduced by 15%. The normal attack damage you deal is increased by 15%. Really strong. You get health, which is really good. You get the instant proc uh, overtime damage against whatever you are hitting as the primary target. And just boosting your all damage and health is so good. I think Flavius and Zeno are going to absolutely freaking dominate the meta. And until I have more information about, is this a pair you would prefer to use in like a fort or a flag? I think they're probably just going to be used all over the place. And I think their victories are not going to look quite as commanding as they did in the reports that I had because ultimately people will cancel rallies rather than run them into the ground. I think that Ultimately, uh, the healing does influence the defense result, I think, very favorably in a garrison test like we were running. But I've already started to see some preliminary reports where people rally into Flavius and Zeno and they don't bring like a, a proper meta combo and they're just getting obliterated. I think Zeno, Flavius, garrison meta is what we're in store for for the foreseeable future until new archers arrive. And I feel like Flavius was made purposefully very strong in the garrison and not in the field so that a new archer can come along and displace them. That's what I think is going to happen. But I'm eager for your thoughts down below in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this video, throw a like on here and subscribe to the channel. This supports the channel tremendously. It means a lot to me personally and also is your way of giving me a virtual high five. Uh, in terms of other combos that we considered, Right, We thought about, oh, what about Constantine and Martel and Richard and all all these commanders? They are, they are retired garrison commanders, my friends. They are just not the same power level. And I just wanted to mention them to address some of the whatabouts in the comments before they actually happen. I, I, Flavius with Zeno is the way. Your next best option is going to be with YSS. I just don't think it's nearly as good as the full infantry garrison. We finally have one. Zeno, Flavius. Run it in that order and crush your enemies. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom. And don't use them for open field. Don't do it.